I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. State Department spokesperson Ned Price condemned the Burmese military for executing pro-democracy activists. The army led a coup in the country in 2021 and has been ruling ever since. While they cracked down on democratic leaders and jailed many of them, this marks the first execution in decades in the country. Human rights groups criticized the executions and said those executed did not receive appropriate legal defense, with the Biden administration echoing the criticisms of the executions as a blow to democracy. Leaders on both sides of the aisle in the U.S. have been critical of the military regime, with minority leader Mitch McConnell giving multiple Senate floor speeches denouncing the erosion of democracy in the country in the wake of the junta. Take a listen to the State Department's comments. You all heard this from the secretary this morning, but I think it bears repeating, and that is we strongly condemn the Burmese military's executions of pro-democracy activists and elected leaders. These heinous acts of violence demonstrate the regime's brutality in a new and horrible light, and we remain concerned it also reflects an ongoing disregard for the human rights and rule of law. As reports indicate, the activists were denied legal representation and the ability to appeal. United States urges all partners and allies to join us in condemning the regime's actions and stepping up pressure on the regime and its supporters. We call on the regime to cease executions, release all those unjustly detained, and restore Burma's path to democracy. With that, take your questions. All right. Well, I wasn't going to start with that, but I will now. Um, so what are you going to do about it? Well, um, obviously, this is... Um, uh, it's just transpired in, in recent hours. We have been in touch uh, with our partners around the world to include our partners in ASEAN. Uh, we are urging, as I said just a moment ago, uh, all countries, all partners, all allies uh, to add their voices uh, when it comes to the condemnation uh, of this heinous affront to the rule of law, this heinous affront to human rights, uh, this heinous affront to the Burmese people who have, since February of last year, uh, expressed an ardent and sincere desire uh, to put their country on the path back to democracy. At the same time, uh, we are urging all of our partners to step up that economic pressure, that political pressure uh, on the regime in Burma. Uh, not only is this an affront to the human rights uh, of the Burmese people, not only is it a slap in the face, uh, to the millions of Burmese who wish to see their country back on the path to democracy. It's also a direct rebuke of the appeal that the junta heard and the world heard uh, from the ASEAN chair, Cambodia, uh, in this case, and other ASEAN leaders who warned the junta in no uncertain terms not to carry out these executions. Uh, we underscore that uh, with the escalating violence, with these uh, horrific atrocities that the junta has carried out, uh, there can be no business as usual with this uh, regime. We urge all countries to ban the sale of military equipment to Burma, to refrain from lending uh, the regime any degree of international credibility, uh, and we call on ASEAN to maintain its important precedent uh, only allowing Burmese non-political representation uh, at regional events. Okay. So what are you going to do about it? Well, States? so... What is the Biden administration? We, we all, we are already uh, responding to this. I said we've been in close touch uh, with our partners, including our ASEAN partners. I think you will see uh, more from us and from our partners in terms of condemnation. And we've made clear all along since February of last year that the costs on the Burmese regime, the costs on the junta will continue to escalate. We will continue uh, to escalate uh, those costs uh, with the economic pressure uh, that we have imposed and that we're prepared to impose. Uh, we, of course, don't preview uh, our own sanctions, uh, but all options that serve to cut off the regime's revenue, uh, which it uses to perpetrate this violence, it's on the table. Uh, we, when considering any such actions, or of course, looking to any potential humanitarian implications for the people of Burma who have already suffered far too much for far too long uh, since this junta came to power. But again, all options are on the table. We're going to work with uh, our partners uh, to see to it that 
the steps we take going forward are coordinated so that they have maximum effect on the regime. Okay. But do you do you think that condemnation, which you've just called for again, and which you've asked for all your partners and allies to join in, is and is enough? It's not um, enough. So? It is it is not enough, and it's certainly not the totality of our response. Uh, our response uh, include includes uh, the statements that you've heard, the statements that uh, you will hear uh, from the United States and our and our partners, but. Uh, the economic measures, the political measures, the diplomatic uh, measures, uh, and the very clear call uh, that we have put out to partners around the world uh, that it cannot be business as usual with the junta. Just to follow up on that, do you, um, <clears throat> you're urging partners to step up. I think you know a lot of activists, a lot of Myanmar people have been asking for you, for the U.S. government to step up uh, in terms of its response for a long time. In that, you know. You've done a lot of sanctions, but you haven't done any sanctions that target the, the gas uh, exports that are you know, the main source of foreign revenue for uh, the hunter. So, you know, why why haven't you taken any action on that? If you're you know asking for not to be business as, as usual for for you know, the hunter, you know, why haven't you taken any action on on, the, on these gas revenues? And, and will you do that now? All means all. Uh, when I say that all options are on the table, I mean that all options are on the table. We are discussing additional response options that we could implement uh, ourselves, that we could implement, implement in coordination uh, with our partners, uh, our partners in ASEAN, our other like-minded partners uh, with whom we've worked <laughs> since February of last year to seek to put Burma back, back on the path to uh, democracy. Even as we consider all of those measures, uh, we are also cognizant uh, of what needs to be a central charge, and that is to do no harm or to do no additional harm in this case. It's clear uh, that the coup has done tremendous harm uh, to the people of uh, Burma, hundreds of whom have been killed in this senseless violence, um, too many of whom find themselves political prisoner uh, of a regime that uh, isn't tolerating any form uh, of dissent or opposition. So uh, as we consider our next steps, as we consider all potential options, we are also taking a very close look at any potential humanitarian implications uh, of steps that we might take. You're talking about enhancing support uh, for, for the Burmese people. Obviously, a lot of the Burmese people have taken up arms against, uh, against the, the, the hunter. Um, you know, do, you, do you still draw the line on, on you know, Military support for the opposition to, to the hunter, and is that something you're going to consider? We're seeking to put Burma on the path back to democracy. Uh, our goal in this is a political one. Our goal in this uh, is to help advance uh, the same objective and the same goal uh, that we've heard the people of Burma, uh, so many of whom have taken peacefully to the streets to demonstrate uh, their support uh, for a return to democracy. It's our goal to support them, and we will continue uh, to support them uh, with uh, uh, with appropriate means. What if other countries, allies, partners uh, were to offer support for, for military opponents? Would you, would you be against that? Uh, again, our goal is a return to democracy. Uh, a uh, protracted conflict, a protracted civil war uh, would not be in anyone's interest, not the least uh, the people of Burma. Just to clarify, we're saying all measures are on the table. We're talking about economic, diplomatic means. Correct. Um, when um, uh, you said that all countries need to condemn and, and take action, uh, can you talk to the role of, um, of some of the, the major players, there, including China in particular, uh, India to a certain extent, that haven't, um, haven't completely uh, distanced themselves from the country? Well, now is the time, uh, because you were right, Sean, in your question that there are countries around the world that uh, haven't done enough, certainly, when it comes to rhetorical condemnation, when it, when it comes to imposing costs, uh, when it comes to the court charge. Uh, that it cannot be business as usual with the junta. Uh, we have discussed uh, the goal of putting Burma back on the path to democracy with virtually all of our allies and partners in the region. Uh, there are some countries in the region, you named a couple of them, uh, where we have had in-depth discussions. When uh, the secretary met with Wang Yi uh, not all that long ago, uh, Burma was a topic of discussion. We've discussed it. Uh, with other senior PRC officials, arguably no country, uh, has the potential to influence the trajectory uh, of Burma's next steps more so than the PRC. And we've called on all countries uh, to act responsibly, 
to use their influence in a way that is constructive, to use their influence in a way uh, that works for the interests of the Burmese people, uh, and then ultimately uh, puts Burma back on the path uh, to democracy. The fact is uh, that the regime has not faced the level of economic and, in some cases, diplomatic pressure uh, that we would like to see. Uh, we are calling on uh, countries around the world uh, to do more. Uh, we will be doing more as well. Can we go to the